Today, I am uh, just super excited again to invite somebody new to the channel. He's not new to the uh, to the world of uh, Elon Musk and Tesla and all the rest of the things we talk about every day. He's been a regular on uh, Farzad's show, and he's got his own YouTube channel. Um, but I want to get uh, Hans Nelson up. And Hans, how are you doing today? <laughs> I'm doing great. Thank you. All right, good. Well, this is Randy Kirk, and Hans is going to talk to us today we're going to talk about FSD, but we're going to talk about it in a way that was unique to me. That's why I, that's why I DM'd him and said, "Hey, Hans, <laughs> can we talk mm -hmm. about that more on my show?" So, if you like this kind of content, you know what to do: uh, subscribe and hit uh, hit the notify button, and then um, you know Patreon. It's good. It's only five dollars a month. All right, Hans. <laughs> um, I <laughs> Yeah, well, thanks for having me today. I'm excited to talk about this. And like you said, this is a, a little bit different take on FSD than I've seen out there. And it really came from just hearing the pushback that people like Gary Black would have on wanting to put FSD in their model in any way, shape or form to try and value that portion of the business that until they see revenues on Wall Street, it's basically a free option that's given by most people. Now, retail investors, we think that that's absolutely crazy, um, but I think it's great when we have those types of dialogues with people because it does help open up our mind. And I think really the ultra bullish side and the ultra bearish side are, neither one of them are completely realistic. Oh, reality no, will that. probably what are you what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm an Uber reality will... and I know I'm right. <laughs> exactly. Well, reality usually ends up somewhere in the middle. And so that's kind of the basis of this. I wanted to think about what are the possibilities for Tesla to earn revenue from SaaS products? And this is specifically related to FSD. There will be other F or other SaaS revenue opportunities that Tesla encounters as it moves along. Um, but, you know, I didn't want to assume that FSD would get all the way to full robo taxi functionality for a couple of reasons. One of them is that we don't know what the regulatory timeframe is going to be, assuming that they get all the function functionality worked out and it is 10 times safer than any human, completely unsupervised. Um, you know, that's, that's a very high bar to get to that level. Anyone who understands a march of nines and just sigma um, and standard deviations, you understand the difficulty of getting not to 99% safety, not to 99.9% .9 safety, but to 99.999999999% safety that is required. And um, so that that's a huge technical challenge to solve, but then there's also the regulatory challenge to solve, which is a whole different thing. And so it's understandable to me that a person like a Gary Black would say, hey, like these are just nearly impossible things. I don't want to put any value on it. So, okay, Gary, I grant you your givens. What is the possibility for Tesla to earn revenue on FSD without RoboTaxi? And so this is a model that I've created to explore that. And I think the foundational thing for people to understand is that right now, Tesla only has one knob to turn on how many people they have using the FSD beta product. And while they're creating this software that can drive like a human, they need to have lots of data and people understand the need for data here. Um, but they're having to play a game where they're balancing getting the data that they need against a safety risk that any safety critical incidents uh, especially, God forbid, a fatality on FSD beta, like they had with the autopilot crash. Um, something like that has the potential to completely derail FSD progress, create a media frenzy. And this is the fear that pretty much everyone in the autonomous driving space has had for, you know, since the DARPA challenges. Um, and so this is something that Tesla, of course, is struggling with, and it is front of mind. So they're trying to eliminate any and all possible risks to safety that could cause a fatality like that. And so you don't want to have too many people using your system, especially you don't want to have too many people who are unsafe using your system. And this is exactly why when they rolled out FSD beta, they rolled it out with a safety score. And so 
at first they had more people who had bought FSD than they wanted to actually be using FSD beta. And so they used the safety score as that knob to keep as many people out of FSD beta as possible and only have the fewest number of people using the system that they needed to generate the necessary data. Um, now that we are past safety score being something that's required to participate in FSD beta, they no longer have the safety score knob. The only knob left is pricing. And so and they're that, using... And with, and with the fact that they have eliminated the safety score aspect and that the rollouts seem to happen really fast now, that once they roll, once they give the next version, I guess 11.4.1 uh, you know, rolled out, uh, they only started mentioning it like on Sunday or Monday, and then all of a sudden by Thursday, they were rolling it out nationally. To customers, uh, yeah, not just that, internally. That would suggest, and I've heard of a bunch of people saying that this would suggest that they are now past high levels of concern that there's going to be a safety risk anymore with the, with the FSD. And now they're trying to get to the comfort stuff. They're just trying to make it mm -hmm. better to the driver and to the passenger that it's acting more human like it's not stopping in the middle of a freeway. It's not, it's not uh, jittering. It's not jumping. Um, so uh, getting that comfort level is now more important so that maybe the, maybe they're, past thinking that there's a much of a risk anymore with FSD. They should be getting close. And that's where I the I think there's an inflection point that will occur. And I think it will be signaled by, you know, because they still have that. They want as many people to use it as possible, but they're still holding their prices yes. at their current levels. And so you can either buy FSD for $15,000 outright or you can sign up for, I think it's what, $200 a month for the beta subscription. Um, and so those are not insubstantial uh, or insignificant hurdles for, for people to use the system. And so, yes, they, they want it to be in more people's hands. They're advancing the capabilities of the system, but they're not ready for every single car in the entire fleet to be part of the development yet. And that is something for people to understand. This will be a piece of software that is in constant development, even far into the future, even after it's surpassed human levels of safety. Um, but yeah, they, they're they still constraining the number of users to a subset of the overall fleet. And they're using the pricing knob to be that constraint currently. My assumption, and this is completely speculation on my part, but my assumption is that once they pass that step change safety critical level of functionality in the system as a whole, for it really to be able to operate safely, completely independently of human supervision, that once they reach that point, they will start offering FSD as a free trial to anyone who owns a Tesla for however long a week. My guess is they'll probably do a month um but well, elon, who knows elon said, elon said the other day right he tweeted out that he would be off mm -hmm. that month free uh at some point in the future at some point exactly and that was the first time i'd heard anyone else mention this besides the times that i had talked about it on either i've talked about it with a number of people now farzad's channel um we discussed this with the interview that i had with yashu on saturday that's out on my channel as well um there's another gentleman so i've gone through this model a few times now um, and the, so that assumption is that once they do that, that that signals a shift in pricing strategy that if they're willing for anyone and it'll start at just North America, um, it probably won't even be available, probably just be the USA. It probably won't even be Canada to begin with. But once they give that free trial to anyone in the United States, to me, that signals a shift in pricing strategy where they actually want as many people to use it as possible because they're no longer worried about safety incidents. And what they want now is to maximize the number of EV miles driven. And if you can maximize EV miles driven through the use of software, you actually make a larger and larger dent in ICE miles driven, even ex-robotaxi 
just by unlocking that piece of software for customers. And so if you can incentivize customers to use it more, then great. And so, but they're not going to completely give FSD away for free to do that. They're going to monetize it. So they're going to give people a free trial and then they're going to pursue an aggressive pricing strategy that is designed to get basically the entire fleet to use FSD at some level, whatever level they find valuable and are willing to pay for. And once that happens, the earnings, I mean, this is basically pure profit earnings off of SaaS because it's, you know, the hardware, this isn't even something that they have to have a huge cloud infrastructure to maintain because all the hardware needed to operate this is in the vehicles. That investment has already been made. Those computers sit in your car right now. Those cameras sit in your car right now. And so there is a minimal amount of software that is required just to handle doing the data collection and downloading and pushing out new software updates to your vehicle at the edge. But for the most part, this is a zero cost of operation product. And so so then so the, then so then we have a, a full FSD that's zero cost, which they could just say tomorrow, uh, look, you know what, the fifteen thousand dollars, we were just kidding. Uh, we're going to we're going to give it to everybody for a thousand dollars or we're going to mm. drop it down to 50 bucks a month. But no, you've got a different approach. You've got uh something that just blew my mind. So how did, mm -hmm. how did you break yeah, it down? Let's, what, do think, what do you think they might do? Obviously, you don't know. But what do you think they might do? What here, do if you let me that? share my screen, I'll actually I'll oh, share good. the model with you this and is, we can walk through it. So those are the those are the bare assumptions. All right. So can you see the uh, yep. It should say Tesla model and then FSC subscription yep. revenue estimates yep. at the top. Perfect. Okay. All right. So I assume that they will not, you know, based on Elon's commentary, they will not sell FSD for maybe they will sell it as a package deal, but it'll be really, really expensive, potentially 50 to a hundred thousand dollars. If you want to buy an outright right. license to operate this in either a personal or commercial uh, capacity. But this model just explores the idea that they will primarily pursue subscription only the individual and especially for um for residential or not residential but private ownership vehicles that it won't make sense to purchase a license like that that it'll just be something that they offer you a monthly subscription option that makes sense and so there are various levels of functionality in autonomous vehicles generally one, two, three, four, and five. So two would be um, something where you have to be aware at all times you are in control. And so it's a driver assist functionality. Three is that you basically have to be a, able to take over control of the vehicle at all times. Um, and so Practically, it's difficult to really say there's much of a difference. Most people talk about systems in terms of either two or four, which four is a system that can operate completely unsupervised in most scenarios other than like heavy storms or in geographies where the roads are terrible or things like that. Um, but what I did was I actually put out a poll to my Twitter followers and I just asked them how much would they be willing to pay? And I created a, you know my poll questions based around those levels of functionality, two, three, and four. And if we you want to dig into the uh, questions themselves and the actual methodology, we can do that. But the, the short story is that my Twitter following, and I know this is a completely non-representative sample, <laughs> yeah. um, my... My Twitter following is definitely biased. So, um, you know, this is not hard numbers. This is just a napkin model to get an idea. Oh, so funny. anyways, um, my weighted average for what people were willing to pay for a, a level two approximately system was about $66 a month. Um, so that's basically, uh, basically that would be what we have today. Yes. So it's, it's going to be better than it is today because it'll, it'll be less glitchy and 
have less interventions and whatnot, but you would still need hands on the wheel or the visual uh, thing, making sure that you're paying attention and you would be, you would still be paying the insurance. Mm -hmm. You would be responsible. Yes. A hundred percent. So then level three would be something where you did not actually have to be paying attention unless the car specifically alerted you and told you, hey, I need your help in this scenario, please take over. Um, so an advancement beyond where we are today. And the weighted average of what my respondents were willing to pay for that was about $156.33 a month, which is still less than the current FSD subscription. Like we are definitely in the early adopter stage of FSD adoption. Now, do, with... you, do you see that level uh, in the future? This is something I don't know that I've heard anybody else talk about. Maybe because you we haven't been thinking about this middle range possibility would you see a future where that takeover might be able to be done on the screen as opposed to with a steering wheel and a uh, and a brake or an accelerator or a pedal <laughs> so in other words deep enough into the future i do think that that's possible like you know they could present you with a range of options that you could quickly say do this um you know i hadn't i hadn't really thought about it in those this terms because this intervention couldn't be an it wouldn't be an emergency intervention like take over because there's a, <laughs> a fire up ahead or something you know it would be more like a storm like you're talking about or bad roads or something where it's it's, it's feeling yeah locked. like a construction you know something some sort of a major construction or scenario where none of the normal driving options make sense and it does require some human judgment exactly and um I mean, you could have a little wheel. You could have a little wheel in the middle of the screen and you turn the little wheel like this to get through it, right? <laughs> Potentially. Yeah. Yes. Or a control at where you know, we're all mm -hmm. used to using our controllers. So you have your you plug in your control. Your game controller. Game controller. Yeah, whatever. So I would imagine it has to be something that you'll have to respond within a certain amount of time. Otherwise the car will just pull over to the side of the road or, you know, do something. Um, and so whatever the option is, it should be something that you can quickly give your attention to and interface with probably in less than a total of five seconds from the first notification. And then, and then how would you think in terms of the liability at this level? Is this something where you, if you have Tesla insurance, you would still pay some insurance in order to have this level? Or would you think that the insurance goes away at this level and Tesla's responsible? I would think that you would be responsible for this um and it may be that tesla offers a product that kind of manages the split between your level of responsibility and their level of responsibility um i haven't really thought deeply about the insurance implications of any of these options to be quite honest I think um, that, I think but i would think in level four they would definitely you know if, if you're thinking about it as a continuum level two you should definitely be responsible right. and level four tesla should definitely be responsible and so level three is kind of that weird hazy yeah. middle place where you might think that tesla is responsible in some cases and the driver is responsible in other cases um and that that's a very interesting problem to try and solve from an insurance and liability standpoint. Well, and also the cost is involved. So if I've got something where I'm still paying a hundred bucks a month for insurance, and now I'm paying another hundred dollars or another $60, I think you said on the first example, I'm paying 60 bucks for my monthly subscription. I've got $160 a month involved. If I now move to the middle one, I'm paying $160 for the service. The, but what mm -hmm. if my insurance is only going to be $50 a month? Well, I'm, my total is only 210. And in that level three uh, or level four, I forget which level you're calling it. Um, when you get to the point where Tesla's paying all of the insurance, that hundred dollars goes away. So even if you're paying two hundred dollars a month or two fifty a mm -hmm. month, you go to two fifty. Yeah, that's a great observation. And I would I would think so. From that standpoint, you might need to actually be willing to pay more. Like if they're bundling the liability into it. No. But at the same at the same point, you know, safety should be such that especially with the direction that they're heading with the occupancy network that hopefully liability in total is dropping to almost nothing that there are very very few accidents ever with right. any of these cars um and so you know the insurance burden should be significantly reduced from today you know 
basically if if this technology works the only way that the adoption will occur is if that liability is low to begin with and so yeah i think that the just thinking about the savings and insurance is one way to help people conceptualize how much more reasonable and affordable this will be in the future because you shouldn't be paying nearly as much as you're paying today for your insurance yeah um and so yeah if we if we're paying roughly we'll just say 60 dollars a month at level two roughly 150 dollars a month at level three and then level four, um, people said that they would be willing to pay almost three hundred dollars a month. Okay. All right. And so that's significantly more actually than today's current FSD subscription levels. And so then I just took all that and put it into a fleet model. So since this is aimed at someone like a Gary Black, I shot for roughly ten million deliveries in 2020 instead of the 20 that tesla's targeting um i would say my personal estimate is that we land somewhere in between probably in the 14 to 16 million deliveries in 2030 range and then Um, and then hans even so if the if it is 20 million it's very likely that 10 million of that will be their own robo taxi fleet r hertz or somebody or something yeah so the 10 million of consumers that would be making this decision as to what level to purchase, I think is very realistic. Yeah, so I have an installed base here that just grows, you know, along with if we, I'm saying we're gonna deliver roughly 2 million cars this year, um, and then that's growing, you know, there's a 35% uh, CAGR in 2024 that drops down to about 20% in 2030 in order to reach that roughly 10 million units delivered in 2030. Um, And so the, that puts the installed base growing to over 45 million vehicles of FSD capable Teslas in 2030. And so if I assume a take rate of only 55% of the fleet at that point in time, um, which I have a hard time believing it would be that low, but just, <laughs> just to be conservative, you know, if, if they have, this level of functionality at the level of safety that we're talking about, that should be relatively conservative. And then um, I also have the these levels of functionality kind of coming in time steps. And so the level two functionality I assign in 2024 that Tesla's capable to release that service in 2024. And that at that point in time, they would only be charging um the 66 dollars a month for that service because they're trying to get the entire you know as much of the fleet as possible to adopt it yep so it would be a significant reduction in the price point of the fsd subscription from today but it would be significantly more revenue because it would have a much much higher um adoption rate and so then in 2025 i'm saying that the level three functionality comes online and i'm just taking the average that half the people are going to do the level three functionality half the people are going to do the level right. two functionality mm-hmm. and so instead of you know, the so these are annualized um instead of the annualized rate per person being at almost 1900 dollars a year for level three or roughly 800 dollars a year for level two it's just right in the middle mm-hmm. um yep and then in level or in the year 2026, I say that level four functionality comes online and, you know, you could move these around as you'd like. Um, but once again, I just took the average. And so I put it right in the middle that it's one third of the users would be using level four. One third of the users would be using level three. One third of the users would be using level two. And so it averages out to roughly $2,000 per year of FSD subscription revenue per vehicle. Um, so then my subscription revenue is very simple. You got $2,053.39 a year times 55% times 46 million vehicles. And you net out to almost $52 billion <laughs> in pure FSD. Like, and this is private use only this is no commercial use case we're not talking about hertz we're not talking about a robo taxi fleet of any kind just 52 billion dollars 
of private use FSD SAS in the year 2030 on a set of very conservative assumptions about the rollout of this technology. And so we can go in here and we can play around with any type of valuation that we want. We can assign a 50 multiple right, right. in 2030. Um, I would think that a 50 multiple in 2030 is probably pretty reasonable based on the level of growth that we should be seeing. Um, and, you know, some people say, well, there should be other competing FSD type software services available at this point in the future, and they may or may not be correct. The likelihood that they'll be able to use any of those in a Tesla is pretty low. Like this is assuming that Tesla's not even licensing this technology yeah. to anyone else. This is just Tesla's own fleet. And so this should be revenue that is pretty much on lock for Tesla. Um, but you know, even if you say, Hey, I just want to give it a 30 multiple, you know, maybe interest rates are at 7% in the year 2030. Right. And we're, we're just not giving the type of growth multiples that we've given in the past. Okay, fine. You can say that I even did an extra fudge factor of saying, Oh, this is only 60% likely. Yeah. I mean, probably realistically, it's more like 80% likely. Um, and if you have a 20% hurdle rate, um, you let's see i've got three percent annual um growth in the amount of shares outstanding here yep. Yep. and so if you say yeah multiple of 30 likelihood of 80 percent hurdle rate of 20 percent and you've got three percent annual increase in the number of shares outstanding then that's an incremental share value today discounted back of 90 dollars to the stock price so and that's and, and 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 that all seems extremely fair. Here's here's what I want my audience to do. If you know Elon, send him this. <laughs> we know that there are people at Tesla at higher levels that watch the YouTube channels. We know this. We're we're 100 because we've heard multiple reports that people say yes, we do watch some of these YouTube channels. So now you've you've uh, done this. I understand you've uh, done something like this with Farzad, Farzad and at least one other YouTuber. Now uh, my YouTube group, somebody needs to get this in front of Elon because he should do this today. This should be this should be rolled mm -hmm. out immediately. Um, I think there would be a it would take a month or three months or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I think that that people could see the in intelligence in this mm -hmm. in terms of how to be able to model it for the future. Um, and also the intelligence from a marketing standpoint in terms of why not- Talking about this. Well, because because let me tell you, I have this, what I call the, grand, the grandpa theory, okay? And the grandpa theory is I'm a grandpa, okay? I'm, I'm an early adopter, but the older you get, the little bit more risk, risk averse you get in situations like riding on roller coasters or going out into, uh, the highest breakers when you're doing your body body surfing, <laughs> so so you're so you get a little more risk averse, and so I have FSD on our Model Y, and we are not using it. Or we're using it. We use it for like ten minutes, and then something weird will happen, and we turn it off. So we'll drop back to the lower level where it's i call it point and drive you know you're everything you're just you just have your hand on the wheel and you're and you're steering but the car is basically doing all the work um it's like um there's going to be folks who might like that level better they might never go to the full thing they want to have a steering wheel they want to be able to drive sometimes um all kinds of reasons why they might want to have flexibility um, so just from a marketing standpoint, just from a product standpoint, having these three levels available and three choices in terms of what to spend totally makes sense. So Elon, it's got my vote. <laughs> well, and my expectation is that they have thought about these types of things and they're just not ready to talk about them. And I'm not exactly sure why that is. I know that from a burn the boats perspective, the way to drive the team forward is to point them at robo taxi full on robo taxi and go pedal to the metal on that and then if you come up short you land somewhere like this um and so maybe 
maybe not allowing the internal team to hedge too much on what they think is possible is the right move from a management standpoint. I'm I'm not sure. But in in, in 2050, somebody will be saying pedal to the metal and somebody will have to look it up on whatever the system <laughs> is at that time to find out what the derivation is. How did they, where did they pedal to the metal um, come from? <laughs> Just like uh, kids today have to look up, what is that save icon right. thing? It looks weird. <laughs> and if they see one, they're like, oh, somebody 3D printed the save icon. That's cool. <laughs> yes, yes. We're in a changing, changing world. Well, Hans, this has been fascinating. Um, this is, uh, like I said, I, as soon as I heard you reporting this, I had to bring you on because, you know, um, the month, your first idea, I guess, which again, you you believe you were one of the first to say of giving a month's free trial, um, already going to be implemented. Um, so Elon, if you listen to Hans last time, mm -hmm. <laughs> listen again, the guy's got it, got got the, the right idea here. And we, we hope that he does it. And um, folks, if you liked uh, Hans's uh, uh, effort here, please hit the like button. Um, and then we'll have him back for some other stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, he and I have talked about some of his other passions with regard to Tesla and with regard to Elon Musk. And so we have some potential fodder for the future. So um, Hans, again, thank you for being on board. And uh, for the audience, as always, it's been great talking to you. Click the link below to get your paperback, Kindle or audiobook now.